In this problem, we're going to look at how to solve, or how to simplify, a complex radical, or rather a complicated radical. In this case, we have a fifth root that wants us to simplify. Now, the trick to remember these problems is to remember that these are, that these, these higher roots are rational exponents. Um, so let's first start by simplifying this one. So we have three times this, this quantity m to the 17th over 1024. That's going to be the same thing as 1024. Let's see, that's going to be 2 to the 10th power. Okay. And if you get, I mean, I won't expect you to know that off the top of your head. What you probably want to do is look at, uh, say, what kind, how can we factor this? Um, and a problem like this is typically going to be something relatively straightforward. Just factor it and uh, see what it factors out as. Okay, so what can we do here? 3m17 divided by 5. Two to the tenth power divided by five. Okay. Uh, ten divided by five. That's just going to give us two. So that's three times. Let's see. M seventeen over five over two. Eh, okay. Let's pull that two over here, just to make it easy. 17 divided by 5. What is that? Um, that's going to be 3 and 2 fifths. Uh, now, don't feel bad about taking a moment and working that out. Um, so that's going to be 2 fifths plus uh, 15 fifths. 15 is 3 divided by 3 times 5. So you get. So this becomes m to the third power, m to the two-fifths power. Okay, we can't simplify that anymore. Let's take a look at the next one. I'll switch marker colors so we don't confuse it with this column. We have minus 5 m to the third. Uh, let's rewrite this. Uh, m to the two-fifths. Boy, that, that looks sloppy, doesn't it? With math, it is important to be clear what you're doing. You get sloppy, it is going to bite you in the buttocks. I speak from experience. Okay, two-fifths, 243. I didn't know what this was. I had to pull up my calculator and figure it out by hand. I looked at that and thought, yeah, that looks pretty divisible by 3. Try that a couple more times. You realize we have 3 to the 5th power. Okay. 3 to the 5th power. Um, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just call it. To the 1 5th. Okay. Sorry, I got ahead of myself a little bit. Just there a second. If I'm not careful, I'll go through problems too fast. I don't know if I'm going too fast. Okay, so we have, let's, let's multiply our fractions, our, sorry, our exponents. Remember the exponent rule. The exponent rule is if you have x to the a, b, that's really the same thing as x to the a times b. So that's the rule I'm using. So we have minus five times n to the third power, uh, m to the two-fifths power, because two times one-fifth is two-fifths, three to the fifth power, divided by five, five divided by five is one, what we really have here is minus five divided by three, three to the first power is three. Uh, 
m to the 3, m to the 2 fifths. Hmm. This looks very similar to this, because they're the same. Okay, but our cofactors are different. We have, this is all the same now. Um, we can write that as uh, three, sorry, it's sloppy. Three over two minus five over three, close parentheses. M to three, M to the two-fifths. Okay, we now have a single term. Um, let's, let's, let's simplify this. Okay, the greatest common denominator here is going to be six, two times three. Uh, so let's see, multiply u times three, you get nine over six. Multiply u guys times two over two, you get 10 over 6, um, 9 minus 10, you get negative 1. So we get, we get is, minus 1 sixth, m to the third, m to the two fifths. That's how you solve it. Um, once again, take it a bit at a time. Uh, biggest problem I see is students doing is trying to do everything all at once. If you can do, if you can solve, you know, a journey, of, okay, it's, it's cliche to say, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Um, you may not know how to see, take every single step, but if you can take the first few steps, you can get further. And then when you get there, then you can take a few more steps. Um, and if you, even if you can't take the next step, you're in a good position to ask a good question. Best quality, quality questions come after you've already started the problem then you got something to ask.